Come on, pup. What are you doing? I grew up traveling in the backseat of my family's wood paneled station wagon. Getting lost fills my soul. It's who I am. It's embedded in my DNA. I'm on a mission to explore and experience every country on the planet, visiting the craziest, most unique places and people in every corner of the world. I'm Jim Kitchen. Join the journey. Nauru is such a cool country to visit, although it has a troubling past. And this remote island, it just doesn't get many tourists, but it definitely has some beautiful beaches and some of the coolest ruins from World War II that I've ever seen. All right, today I'm in Nauru, an island in the Pacific, about 1,900 miles north of Australia. And Nauru has the distinction of being the smallest country in the entire world. It has the second smallest population of any sovereign country besides the Vatican. So this is a sleepy little island and it's seldomly visited by tourists, probably because number one, they do not make it easy for tourists to get a visa here. And number two, the national airline, Nauru Air, it isn't the most reliable of carriers. However, once you get here, you can see from behind me that it's a really gorgeous and gorgeous beaches and it's generally a really pleasant place to visit. All right, a little, about, a little bit about the history of Nauru. People came here about 3,000 years ago, and they were most likely Micronesians or Polynesians. And there are 12 clans or tribes here on the island. As I mentioned, this place was calm and tranquil. In fact, it was called Pleasant Island until 1830, when the Europeans came off the whaling ships and they started trading with the locals here. Well, what they trade? The locals traded food and the Europeans traded, wait for it, alcohol and firearms. And that didn't go well. The booze and the guns totally disrupted the peaceful lifestyle that had existed for 3,000 years here. And a 10 year civil war wiped out about a third of the population. So in the year 1900, phosphate was discovered in Nauru. And it's believed that the massive stores of phosphate here were from the millions of seabirds that used to call this place home. What's phosphate used for? Well, Australia was using the Nauru phosphate for fertilizing their crops and for building bombs. Okay, it's the early 1940s and the Japanese are on the offensive and they pretty much conquered every island in the North and the South Pacific. And the Japanese arrive here in Nauru in August of 1942. Number one, to steal the island's phosphate. And number two, to use this island to cut off the supply lines between the United States and the Australians. But here's the real drama and story of World War II on Nauru. The Japanese were unbelievably harsh with the islanders here. They rounded them up and sent most of the Nauruans to work as laborers on the island of Chuuk, where the conditions were dreadful. And for those Nauruans who remained here, things were almost as bad because there was no food. And get this, in one of the cruelest and most inhumane acts of the entire war, the Japanese gathered the 39 leprosy survivors, the lepers, who were living here on Nauru, put them on a boat and then sank them. They fired on the boat and then sank them in the middle of the ocean. It's just terrible. Okay, by the time the Japanese were firmly established here in Nauru, they had been defeated by the United States at Midway and they were now on the defensive and expecting a U.S. invasion. They installed these enormous 12.77 millimeter guns here at the top point, the highest point on the island here on Command Ridge. They had pillboxes on the beach and they had built an underground hospital here in bunkers as well. The Americans smartly decided not to invade Nauru and they instead pounded it by the air and by sea, destroying the airstrip that you fly into now serving as Nauru's international airport. Nauru is a really cool place to visit. You need to, you need to go there and here's why. The people could not be any nicer. Uh, this place has a lot of potential, so go check it out. They've got some really cool small hotels there, um, some good food, and 
one of the things to do there when you go is do a walk or a run around the entire island. It's pretty small, but uh, start in the morning and you'll see the entire country that day. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to keep exploring and learning about the rest of the world. Join the journey.